This is Brian Carlton for ABN Newswire. I'm back at the Bowlers Club of New South Wales for the June Symposium Resources Roadshow and just happened to run into Julian Malnick, who's the Executive Chairman of Direct Nickel. And we thought we'd have a bit of a chat. Julian, how are you going? Great, thanks Brian. Welcome Good to, to ABN see. Newswire. Good to see you, you too. Now, um, tell me about Direct Nickel. What makes your process for extracting the stuff from the ground different to everyone else? The, I guess the most important fundamental piece of science is that there's two forms of nickel in the earth sulphides and laterites and the sulphides are becoming increasingly hard to find you know we're running out basically and yet 70 percent of our reserves are sitting out there in laterites abundant and uh, we've had a, uh, a battlefield recently where processes that have tried to treat the laterites have been unsuccessful the name Ravensthorpe might ring a bell yes it does and uh, it was a major you know catastrophe uh, ours is completely different, completely new, completely effective, elegant solution. How does it work? The process is a hydrometallurgical process and the most important technical information for the viewer is that it's, uh, it's done at no pressure. So like Ravensthorpe had these massive submarine-like devices that are called autoclaves. We actually have a very efficient process that operates at uh, very quickly at um, ambient temperature. So relatively and low pressure. temperature. And, and are you using iron or reusing, I understand, most of your reagent? Traditionally, in these processes for nickel laterites, they've used uh, sulfuric acid. That's, you know, basically you've been, uh, there's, there's been pyro processes that are just using fire, but everywhere else sulfuric acid is used. Um, our process uh, uses a, a, an alternative reagent and we, in the sulfuric processes, you use it once and throw it away. So we have a great advantage in that we can uh, recycle our reagent, which actually has some environmental benefits, as you'd imagine. And no doubt keeps the cost down as well. Exactly. So we have our, our operating cost is 40% of an existing uh, laterite uh, operating cost in a typical operation. Our capital cost is under half. So it's... Uh, we're a revolution that's uh, waiting to happen. Technology was developed in the States, if I'm not mistaken. The precursor processes actually come from industrial chemistry. Okay. So there's, if you like, there's two railway tracks through the middle of town. The industrial chemists don't talk to the metallurgists, <laughs> never have, never will. Okay. And we, we've migrated a, a chemical uh, 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 industry process across into the mining process, just keeping treating uh, rocks as a basic chemical feedstock. Nickel got absolutely hammered during the global financial crisis. What, uh, how long do you expect it to take to recover fully and, and beyond where it was pre-GFC? Um, I hope it never goes back to those highs myself. It's an interesting thing to say. Well, we have a low cost process, so we're actually more competitive when everyone's under pressure. Stainless steel is a magic alloy. You know, we, we, you use it in your, your sink, 5% of stainless steel is actually consumed in laundry and bathroom sinks wow. and kitchen sinks. Um, so it's a really uh, useful alloy and you only need a little bit of nickel in it. So the demand is pretty inflexible. People want their nickel. And uh, there's a huge amount of uh, demand growing in China and uh, all of those growth nations that we're aware of. So the future of nickel is looking fantastic and there's its conundrum. You know, running out of sulphides, plenty of laterites. When you say uh, plenty, how much are we talking about here? Enough for 120 years. Globally. Drilled out today, yep. there's enough for 120 years, and yet we could go easily drill out uh, probably e easily that amount again. So, so people have stopped drilling because there's uh, of this metallurgical difficulty. I'm hearing here that your process, the uh, secret technology here, is, you think, going to change the nature of the industry? We're a... Uh, you know, a hundred million dollar company and uh, I guess you have to be careful that you don't stick your neck out too far and, and sound uh, uh, overstate your case. But put it this way, there's nothing preventing us from going on to be the biggest nickel company in the world. I, I cannot report to you an impediment. We have a great advantage, economic advantage, and I can't report to you anything that prevents us from, from using that uh, to full extent, and that will impact uh, existing laterite and existing sulphide producers. Will you be licensing the technology to existing players, or do you hope to buy your own tenements, do your own mining? Is that how it's going to work? Look, the, the history of licensing is n not a good story. 
uh, I think you end up on other sides of the table. To, to if you like, if I gave you a license to go and do something, and you didn't know how to do it, we would have a, a, a an unaligned, what I call an unaligned uh, contract. We want to share in the nickel resource. We want to share in the uh, the the commissioning, the building of the plant, and we want to share in the production. So we are totally aligned. We're on the same side of the table. So we don't intend to out license, okay. but we do tend to uh, be owners of, of the nickel laterite in part. What sort of deals have you struck already? Where, where are you at at the moment? We actually are just getting our first uh, transaction away on the London Exchange. It's market sensitive information, so I can't say it here, much as I'd love to. Um, we have our uh, tech, has, uh, our shareholder, Tech Cominco, now known as Tech Resources, Canadian, Canada's BHP, if you like. Um, we have a strong technical alliance with them. Uh, we've put a, a major discovery of techs into this company. Um, it's an AIM listed company and uh, a license. This company will be announced in the, in the coming few weeks. So um, Interesting times ahead. Oh, well, you know, we're uh, quietly, uh, quietly uh, excited, yeah. Julian Malnick, Executive Chairman of Direct Nickel, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you, mate. This is Brian Carlton for ABN Newswire.